shall not want. Bless the Lord. Amen. Truly, we thank God for his grace and mercy. We thank God for every privilege that the Lord affords us. Thank God for this opportunity to present to some and introduce the other our own minister, Bob Jackson, Jr.
I will bless the Lord yes, at all times. Yes, His yes, praise yes, will continue yes, to be my in my yes, 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank Lord. You, I thank you, thank you yes, for your goodness. Yes, and I thank you for your mercy. Yes, I thank you, Lord, that you seem fit to give me another day. It is a day that I've never seen before. And I thank you, Lord, because I recognize that it's a grace gift from you. I thank you for your grace and mercy. Be with me now, Lord, as I open the word of God, your word of truth, to bring what you, I believe, that you have given me. Bridle my tongue. Keep my mind staying on you. And I will be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. First, I'd like to give thanks and praises to the Most High God, the only wise God. God, the Holy Spirit. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. And then I'm going to thank my pastor, Paul K. Satchel. Yes. I want to thank him for just giving me the opportunity to stand before you. A lot of pastors, uh, you have to walk for a long, 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 long time <laughs> before they let you come up. But my pastor has not been like that. And I appreciate it. And I thank you, Pastor Savage. I thank you. Amen. The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. The joints and the marrow is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. You open the word of truth this morning to Mark chapter 5, which has been read in your hearing. Mark chapter 5. Second Peter. 3, 9, B states, The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes. God can save anyone yes. and use them, them for his glory. Yes. Even when everyone else has thrown in the towel and given up on an individual, yes. God has the power and the ability yes. to save and use that person if that person is willing to turn their life over to him. God sent the prophet Jeremiah to a maker of clay pots to illustrate his sovereign control over a nation that had turned its back on him. As Jeremiah watched the potter shaping a pot, the clay became marred or damaged. The potters simply reshaped the clay, yes. the moire clay, into a different style pot. Mm. The Lord explained to the prophet that his people were like clay pots in his hand, which he is free to reshape in accordance with his desire. Yes, yes, yes. A good friend of mine and brother in the Lord, Harold Stevens, shared with me that his pastor who has since gone on to be with the Lord, used to say, God don't waste nothing. Oh, this may not be grammatically correct, mm. but when you think about it, there's a nugget of truth in that statement. Yes, sir. God can take a marred human being oh, yeah. and make them into a thing of beauty. Yeah. My wife, as we were talking about this, she was telling me about her her, her aunt, who was an excellent cook, who could take a potato and peel it, 
in it so thin that you could actually read through it. <laughs> she would use that potato and then she would cook that potato and then she would take the skin and wouldn't throw that away but use that to water the plants with. She didn't waste nothing. Yes, sir. My mother could take a turkey after Thanksgiving. You're all familiar with this. Yes. After Thanksgiving, you would not have, you would have turkey soup, mm, yes. turkey sandwiches, yes. uh, turkey whatever. Yes. You would eat turkey, am I right? You would eat turkey, yes. eat turkey Benny Mars for, for months. Yes. If it lasts that long. Yes, sir. With that in mind, the title of this message is, God Don't Waste Nothing. Yes, sir. God Don't Waste Nothing. Yes, sir. By way of introduction, this message actually begins in Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. In this chapter, we will witness the humanity of our Lord and also his deity. Yes, Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is 100% man and 100% God. Yes, sir. In his humanity, he could bleed. Yes. Sir. In his humanity, he could get tired. Yes, sir. In his humanity, um, he felt pain. Mm -hmm. But as in, in his deity, yes, sir. In his deity, he was omnipresent. Yes, sir. It means he was everywhere at the same time. He was omniscient. He knew all that was knowable. Yes, sir. Or he knows. He was omnipotent. He was all powerful. Yes, sir. He is all powerful. Mm -hmm. He is absolute righteousness. Mm -hmm. He's incapable of telling a lie. Mm -hmm. He is absolute truth. Mm -hmm. He is God. In, in one person, he is co-eternal and co-equal to Father, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. We will witness the, as I said before, the humanity and the deity of our Lord. Our narrative takes place in chapter 4 during the height of our Lord's ministry. Everywhere that the Lord Jesus Christ went, huge crowds followed him. At this particular time in chapter 4, the crowds were so thick, such a throng that our Lord had to go into a ship and he taught the crowds from the ship as the crowds gathered on the shoreline. The Lord Jesus Christ was always teaching. And this time he had spent an exhausting day teaching. He had been teaching by way of parables. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. The story of the lost or prodigal son is, is an example of a parable. And it illustrates the love of God the Father for, he, for us even when we go astray. The word in the Greek, Sister Joyce, is parabola. Para means alongside of, and boldly means to throw. So a parable is one story thrown alongside of another. It's where we get the English word paratransit, which means to help transport someone from one location to another. And para mean, which is a person that helps out a lawyer or someone in the legal defense profession. Amen. But our Lord has been teaching all day and he is now physically tired. Mm -hmm. His humanity is exhausted. But there's still one more thing he has to do. Amen. There's someone that he has to minister to. Someone on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. Someone that is in a hopeless, helpless condition. Someone who is marred, and that's where we all are at one time. Someone that only the Lord Jesus Christ can handle because God don't waste nothing. Amen. Yes, sir. Jesus informs the disciples that he and they are going 
to the other side. As the master is on the ship and the ship goes out into the sea, our Lord goes to the hinder part of the ship, the back of the ship, yes, sir. and he falls to sleep, a deep, peaceful sleep. Suddenly, a great storm erupts, a perfect storm. Yeah. A storm complete with rain, high winds, and enormous waves. A storm of such magnitude that even the seasoned fishermen on board feared for their lives. But the Savior sleeps. By the way, this storm was created by the Lord to test the disciples failed. Yes, they failed. <laughs> yes, sir. But the Savior sleeps. His humanity sleeps. His deity never sleeps. Deity never gets tired. Amen. While the humanity of Christ sleeps left. His deity was wide awake and in full control of the situation. Yes, even when it seems like our prayers are not being answered, well, even when heaven is silent yeah. and it appears that the Lord is sleeping, know this, beloved. Psalm 121, 3b and 4 reminds us that he that keepeth thee yes. will not slumber. And behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. If you are a child of God, he is aware of every party, every difficulty, every trial in your life. And your life is still in the hands of a sovereign God. And nothing happens to the believer unless God allows it. But in the midst of this song, the disciples awaken the Lord with their cries for help. The Lord wakes up, rebukes the disciples and the storm yes, with the power of his voice. And they continue on to the other side. This is where our message begins. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, yes. who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains. The chains had plucked asunder by him and the feathers broke into pieces. Neither could any man tame him, and always night and day. He was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Jesus reaches the shore and disembarks in the country of the Gadarene. Some of your Bibles might read the country of the Gergesene. They are one and the same. Gadara was the territory six miles east of the Sea of Galilee. It was a fertile land with mountains bordering its coast. It was also a Roman colony. Some scholars believe that this is where the tribe of Gad, the descendants of Gad, the seventh son of Jacob, settled there during the conquest of the promised land. They requested that Moses allow them to settle there because the land was ideal for cattle raising. <coughs> Moses granted their request with the stipulation that when trouble broke out on the other side of the Jordan, that they would come and help. Some scholars believe that the Gadites also got involved in the swine raising business. Some even say they became poor bootleggers, which would be against the Levitical dietary laws. Hold your place and turn to Leviticus 
chapter 11. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Leviticus, chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord spoke, spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof, and is cloven footed, and chewed the cud among the beasts, that shall you eat cows, oxen, and those. Uh, nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, and of them that divide the hook as the camel. Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hook. He is unclean to you, and the coon is a member of the rabbit family, more rat than rabbit. Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hook. He is unclean to you, and the hair, because he cheweth the cud, and divideth not the hook. He is unclean to you, and the swine, the pig. Though he divide the hook, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Which precluded them from partaking of the delicacies that has put a lot of black folks in the hospital in an emergency room. <laughs> Means they could not have bacon, <laughs> ham, <laughs> streak of lean, Fat back. Streak of fat. Ribs. Pickled pig feet. Pig ears. Pig tail. Did I miss any lines? Hog balls. And the ever popular chip. Or as our more cultured brethren would say, chittering. <laughs> Joe said no hot sauce. Now the Bible doesn't say they were they were involved in the hall business, but certainly they were in close proximity uh -huh. to the pigs. While they may not have been consuming the pig, they might have been selling. It only goes to show you when you start getting away from the Lord in one area, it makes it easier and easier to get away in other areas. As Jesus disembarks the ship, immediately he is met with his assignment, his reason for going to the other side. From out of the tomb comes a man with an unclean spirit. Actually, this man was saturated with demons. These demons were powerful, malevolent, and fierce. The tombs were caves cut out of the sides of mountains where the dead, where the dead were buried. Um, sometimes the dead bodies were unceremoniously dumped in the tombs that uncovered and left there to rot. Three of the four Gospels record this incident, Matthew 8, 23 to 27, Luke 8, 22 to 25, and our text. Matthew says that there were two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by the way. These men protected their turf. Luke and Mark only record one. Maybe this man was the worst of the two. Luke says the man had demons for a long time and that he wore no clothes. Night and day, this man was in the mountains and in the tombs, 
crying and cutting himself with stones. His home was in the tombs among the dead. He ate with the dead. He slept with the dead. He smelled like the dead. When Venice and I were courting, is that proper now? Courting, I guess y'all are not dating. <laughs> she had, an, she lived in an apartment building on Allegheny Avenue. And I went over one afternoon and when I walked into the apartment building itself, there was a spell that met me at the door. And it was a spell that I never saw before. As I made it to the elevator and went up to the, her apartment, which was on the second or third floor, and I asked her about it, and she said that her and the rest of the residents had smelled it also. We later found out that there, that smell came from a dead body. That dead body had been that a man had died in the apartment on the first floor. And he had been dead in that apartment for three days. And the smell permeated the whole building. It's a smell that once you smell it, you never forget the smell. I, I, don't, I don't understand how my hat's off to undertakers. But this man lived among the smell. He was the living among the dead. These demons had this man in constant torment, as well as the inhabitants of Gadara. They had tried to restrain him with iron chains, which he simply broke to pieces. Verse, back to our text, verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thou, with thee, thou, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. But when he saw Jesus, hallelujah, afar off. When you're in the tombs, Jesus always seems afar off. Yes, sir. When life has just beat you down, Jesus seems afar off. When nothing seems to be going right, Jesus seems afar off, and that's just what the devil wants you to believe. Yes, sir. But the devil is alive. Yes, sir. Even in the tombs, you can still get a prayer. Yes, sir. Even in the tombs, you can still call on the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. That's in the tombs, sometimes is the only place some of us will be able to call on the name of Jesus. I remember hearing uh, the sister who sings, um, the name escapes me now. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with her. Um, she sings about her, her experience. Some of y'all help me. Um, Helen Bale, you got it. Helen Bale, and she talks about her experience when she was in, with drugs and alcohol yeah. and she recounted the experience in a testimony where one night she was said she was she was getting loaded yes. and, and uh, she passed out and when she woke up all of her body fluids were doing their own thing yes, she still said but she she had God gave her yes sir the spirit, she had enough sense to call on the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Even in the tombs, you can still get a prayer through if it's nothing more than Lord help. Yes, sir. I believe that this man, that, that God gave this 
this man a moment of clarity. Yes, sir. And that's all he needed. Just a moment. And as hard as the demons tried, they could not stop the power of God. Yes, sir. The man ran and worshipped the Lord. Some scholars believe that it was the demons that worshipped Jesus. That may be true. But the important thing is the man got to Christ. Yes, sir. And once he got to Jesus, all that's for yes, Hold up. Wait a minute. It's the bottom of the night. Yes, sir. The Lord Jesus is up the back. But God is getting ready to do a new thing. Yes. Jesus commands the demons, and Matthew says with one word, go. Yes, sir. That's how. Yes. Mark and Luke provides us with a little more dialogue. Yes. All demons live in constant fear of the day when the Lord will punish them. Yes, sir. These demons were no exception. Mm -hmm. Our Lord asked the spokesman of the demon, yes, sir. what is your name? Mm -hmm. Thy name. The demon responds saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, there has been some speculation as to why the Lord asked that question. Some have speculated that the Lord asked the question so that he, Jesus, could know exactly who he was dealing with. But Jesus being God already knew. Yes, sir. Others have speculation, speculated that the question was asked to find out the possessed man's name. Again, Jesus being God already knew that too. Yes, sir. Would you like to hear my speculation? Somebody say amen. Yeah. I believe that with Gadara being a Roman colony, uh -huh. the inhabitants would be familiar with the Roman legion. Yes, sir. Which would could, could consist of 3,500 to 6,000 men. Yes. And Jesus asked the question for the benefit of the disciples and the people to further illustrate his awesome power. Yes, sir. If Jesus could rid this man of over a thousand demons at one time, mm. this would further demonstrate that he Jesus was no ordinary man. Right. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly how many demons possessed the man, but we find out later that Jesus sent 2,000 into the swamp. Yes, Verse 10, and he besought him much that he would not send them out of the country. Now there was, there were there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feed. Yes. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, yes. that we may enter into them. Yes. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. Yes. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And there were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. Yes, sir. And, it, and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sit, clothed, and in his right mind. Yes. And they were afraid. Yes, sir. And they saw it, and they that saw it told them how it befell him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. Yes. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Nicopolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did mark. Yes, sir. At this point, I would like to interject a few points concerning demons. Yes, this would come under the heading of things, some things Christians need to know about demons. Yes, sir. Point one, demons 
are real. Yes, sir. The Bible say, cites many cases of the existence of demons. Yes, sir. Our text be one. Yes, sir. If the Bible say they exist, <laughs> they exist. Yes, sir. Point two. Mm -hmm. Demons are angels. Yes, sir. Fallen angels. Yes. There are two kinds of angels. The elect angels who work for God. Yes, sir. And the fallen angels who work for the devil. Yes, sir. According to Revelation 12, 3 and 4, Satan in his revolt against God drew a third of the stars of heaven. Mm -hmm. The stars being symbolic of the angels. Yes, sir. That followed him in his rebellion. Mm -hmm. Point three. Demons are disembodied spirits. Yes, yes. Demons like some angels are invisible. Yes, sir. Point four. Mm -hmm. Demons have tremendous power. Yes, sir. As witness of around ten. Yes, sir. Point five. Demons like their boss, Satan, wants mankind to believe that they don't exist. Yes, sir. There are probably some demons right now telling you that Minister Jackson is out of his mind. Yes, sir. There are no such things as demons. You are far too intelligent to yes, believe that. <laughs> Whoever believes in demons. Yes, sir. Point six. Good. Where, listen, okay. Where the Spirit of God is, the spirit. there is usually a high concentration of demon activity. Yes, sir. Let me repeat that. Some of y'all missed it. Yes, sir. Where the Spirit of God is, yes. there is usually a high concentration of demon activity. Yes, sir. Let me break it down. There are churches all over this city and all yes, over this nation yes, sir. that are filled to capacity. Yes, Standing room only. Yes, sir. Parking lot is full. Yes, Three, maybe four thousand people. Yes, sir. But the Spirit of God has left the building. Yes, sir. There are churches with maybe 25 or 50 people. Yes, sir. But the Spirit of God is there. Mm -hmm. In that city, where there are three or four thousand people, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God is, is left the building, the demons leave too because mankind is capable of creating havoc all by himself. Yes, sir. The old sin nature can take care of anything that goes on. Mm -hmm. The people there, the Bible has become relegated to just a book. Yes, sir. The pastor is being praised among everybody else, and the Lord Jesus Christ yes, right. is left on the back seat. Yes, sir. The demons don't have to worry about being there, mm -hmm. but where the Spirit of God is, yes, sir. there is liberty. That's why we pay for our pastor. Yes, sir. If the, if the demons or the devil can get to the man of God where the spirit is, mm -hmm. he doesn't have to worry about the body. Yes, sir. So we keep our pastor, we keep our ministers, we keep our the people of God in prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have to worry about that. Satan is not concerned about where a high concentration of people are. Mm -hmm. Remember Hotley and Phineas. Yes, sir. First Samuel 12 and 2. Uh -huh. The sons of Eli. Yes, sir. Who the Bible says were, were not only worthless, uh -huh. but worst of all, they knew not God. Yes, sir. Yet they were priests in the temple. Uh -huh. And they were priests in the temple of the Lord, performing and perverting priestly duties. Yes, sir. Pray for our spiritual leaders. Yes, sir. Pray for our leaders. Yes. Keep our pastor close to the Lord. Yes. Demon activity is high. Yes, sir. 
with the Spirit of God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Finally, the question is often asked, can a born-again believer fall prey to demon possession? Absolutely. Absolutely not. At the moment of faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit indwells the body of every believer. I'll prove it to you. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Hold your place, turn to 1 Corinthians, Acts, Romans, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And let's look at verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Paul asks the question. What? That's a question. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. At the moment of faith in Christ, your body becomes a temple for the residence of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Darkness cannot fellowship with light. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit controls your body. Yes, sir. Now, demons can be demon in uh, uh, believers can be influenced by demons, yes, sir. but never demon possessed. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Send us back to our text. Send us into the swine. Yes, sir. Was the demon's request. Notice the demons had to get permission to leave. Yes, sir. Everything is subject to the Lord. Uh -huh. Rain, wind, the sea, demons, everything, the Lord controls it all. Yes. Jesus gave them leave. Ordinarily, demons like to indwell human bodies. Yes, sir. Maybe it has to do with the warmth of the body. Remember, demons are disembodied spirits. Maybe it's the sense of touch, taste, or smell. All the things that we take for granted until we lose one of them. David said in Psalm 139, 14a, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. These demons were, but these demons were smart. Yes, sir. Smart enough to know that the Lord was not going to let them inhabit another human being. Uh -huh. So they requested to enter into the swine. Yes, sir. Jesus didn't have a problem with this. Yes, Thank you. The, de the demons didn't have a problem with this. But apparently the piggies had a big problem with being demon possessed. Yes, sir. So much so that they ran down a steep place and was choked in the sea. About 2,000. Needless to say, none of these piggies went to mark. Some of y'all get that on the way home. Now, these piggies represented quite a, a sizable financial loss. But the Savior's priority is people, not possession. Yes, sir. As usual, bad news always travels fast. Mm -hmm. At least it was bad news for the owners of the pigs. Yes. And there's always someone who has the ability to spread the news with lightning speed. <laughs> the Bible say they says that they that fed the swine uh -huh. fled and told everybody. And they came to Jesus and saw the former demonic yes. sitting at peace. Jesus had given this man peace. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is the only one that can give you peace. 
Isaiah 26 and 3 said, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted the Lord. The man was clothed, not just physically clothed, he was now clothed in the righteousness of Christ and in his right mind. Thank God for a right mind. Maybe for the first time in months, maybe even years, this man was in his right mind. His norms and his standards were right with God and with man. Jesus Christ has the power to give you a right mind. Because God don't waste nothing. Now, the people who were once afraid of this man before Jesus healed him are still afraid. Yes, sir. There's just no pleasing some people. Yes, sir. Instead of thanking the Lord, yes, sir. the people began to pray or beg that Jesus depart their coast. Yes. Luke says the whole multitude of the country of the Gatherings around about the pig owners as well as the rest of the inhabitants wanted the master out. There are those who would rather have pigs than Jesus. Yes, sir. Now, Jesus is a gentleman. He will not stay where he's not wanted. But as he was about to leave, the former demonic praised or begged that he might go with the Lord. Notice the others beg that Jesus just go. But this man begs to go with the Lord. He didn't even know where the Lord was going. And it didn't matter. As long as he could be with him. Have you ever had a long just to be with the Lord? Yes, sir. But Jesus had other plans for this man. Yes. And Jesus... This man, the Savior had other plans for the, this former madman. Yes, sir. This loser. Mm. This person that the people had just written off. Uh -huh. This person who formerly terrorized the whole neighborhood. He is now being ready to be used by God because God don't waste nothing. God has a purpose for this man's life. Yes, sir. Jesus said to him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee. And have compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish. The word in the Greek, Sister Joyce, is caruso. It means to herald as a public crier, yes, especially divine truth, uh -huh. and to, to proclaim, to preach in the Decapolis, yes. an area that was comprised of ten cities, mm -hmm. how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Yes, sir. This man became an evangelist yes, for the Lord. Yes, yes, there is no way of knowing the tremendous impact his testimony had on the region. But I would venture to say that there were some who did more than just mark. Yes, sir. But actually committed their lives yes. to the one who had delivered this man yes. from all these things. These yes. Deeds. yes, sir. You may be here and you're struggling with something. Your tomb might be a tomb of work. Yes, sir. The tomb of depression. A tomb of alcohol, a drug addiction, a tomb of fornication, a, a tomb of unforgiveness, a tomb of low self-esteem. Yes, sir. You may have even con considered suicide. Uh, Your situation may seem hopeless. The Lord says there are no hopeless situations where he is concerned. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, Amen. and I will give you rest. Amen. Whatever the tomb may be, the Lord Jesus Christ is, is the escape.
escape from. Yes. Yes. He is the exit plan. Whatever the problem, whatever the situation, Christ is the answer. Yes. Your life does matter. Yes. God has a purpose and a plan for you. Yes. And if you're here without Christ, know this, beloved. No. Every sin that you ever committed, past, present, and will commit in the future was poured out Lord on the Lord Jesus Christ, the judge of the capital. Yes, sir. And you now have the opportunity to accept him as your personal savior because God don't waste nothing. Amen. God bless.